طيب بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا ما بعد فإن شاء الله try to complete today the last section of the book known as قيام أو مختصر قيام الليل the summarization of the book known as قيام الليل by Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Nasr al-Marwazi رحمه الله تعالى who died in the year 294 after the Hijrah and we're in the chapter that has to deal with <coughs> باب الترغيب في ليلة القدر وتفصيل العمل وتفضيل العمل فيها على العمل في سائر السنة. The chapter that deals with the encouragement regarding the night of Al-Qadr and the preference of acting during that night over the rest of the year. And we're at the narration number 237. قال محمد بن النصر وعن سلمة عن أبي مالك رحمه الله تعالى في قوله فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم قال من السنة من السنة إلى السنة وما كان من خلق أو رزق أو مصيبة أو نحو هذا. He said on the authority of سلمة عن أبي مالك رحمه الله تعالى who said regarding the statement of Allah فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم during it i.e. during ليلة القدر every wise affair is separated or disseminated or uh, given, he said, i.e. from year to year, whatever was regarding what was going to be created or provided or any afflictions and things similar to this. قال يكتب من أم الكتاب في ليلة القدر ما يكون في السنة من موت وحياة ورزق ومطر وشيء حتى الحجاج يكتبون يحج فلان ويحج فلان. He said on the authority of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما regarding the statement of Allah during it it is decided every wise matter. He said uh, it is written from Um al Kitab on the night of Al Qadr what will happen during that year regarding deaths. Lives, provisions, rain, and everything else. Even the people who will perform pilgrimage, they are written down during that year. It will make Hajj so and so, and he will make Hajj so and so. قالوا أن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه في قوله تنزل تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر. قال في تلك الليلة تصفد مرضة الشياطين وتغل عفاريت الجن وتفتح فيها أبواب السماء كلها وتفتح فيها أبواب السماء وتفتح فيها أبواب السماء كلها ويقبل الله فيها التوبة من كل تائب قال فلذلك قال سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر وذلك من غروب الشمس إلى مطلع الفجر. He said on the authority of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما Regarding the statement of Allah, the angels descend as well as a ruh during it with the permission of their Lord with every affair, salam or peace. It is until the advent of Fajr. He said in that night, the marad to shayateen, the marad, the wicked or corrupt shayateen are chained up. And the strong or powerful jinn are locked up and the gates of the sky all of them are opened and Allah accepts during it the tawbah of everybody who asks for forgiveness he said and for that reason Allah says salam i.e peace or safety it is until the coming or the advent of fajr i.e the peace and the safety during Laylatul Qadr is because there's no shayateen and the forgiveness is granted during that night. He goes on to say, And that starts, and this is an important issue, when we talk about when does Laylatul Qadr start. Right? A lot of people might overlook this. Laylatul Qadr starts when? From Maghrib. Laylatul Qadr starts from Maghrib. He says, and that is from the setting of the sun into the matla of Al Fajr, to the rise or to the breaking of the dawn. And so it's important to remember that Laylatul Qadr doesn't just start after you pray Isha and it's not just the last third of the night. It starts after Maghrib. So be diligent even after Maghrib with voluntary acts of worship, of charity, kindness, salat. Whatever you can do during that time, it's included from the actions of Laylatul Qadr. He says, وَإِنْ قَتَادَتَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرٌ 
خير من ألف شهر ليس فيها ليلة القدر ليس فيها ليلة القدر. He said on the authority of Qatada that the statement of Allah it is better than a thousand months. It is better than a thousand months that don't have Layla Til Qadr in them. And that's an important distinction you see that the scholars they make. They always say that Layla Til Qadr is better than a thousand months that don't have Layla Til Qadr in it. Because if it was better than a thousand months, one of those months would have been Ramadan and one of those nights would have been Layla Til Qadr and it would have multiplied the actions to a larger extent. And so the Salaf, they always talk about that. Layla Til Qadr is better than a thousand months that don't have Laylatul Qadr in it. قَالَ وَالْمُجَاهِدُ سِيَامُهَا وَقِيَامُهَا أَفْضَلُ مِنْ سِيَامُ أَلْفِ شَهَرُ وَقِيَامُهُ نعم أَلْفِ شَهَرُ وَقِيَامُهُ نعم وَالْمُجَاهِدُ سِيَامُهَا وَقِيَامُهَا أَفْضَلُ مِنْ سِيَامِ أَلْفِ شَهَرٍ وَقِيَامِهِ لَيْسَ فِيهَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرُ سلام هي قال سلام هي من أن يحدث فيها داء أو يستطيء شياطين and ya'mala fi hasu. He said that Mujahid said that the fasting and standing of it, i.e. of Laylatul Qadr, is better than the fasting of a thousand months and standing during that time that don't have Laylatul Qadr in it. And the statement of Allah, salam, or peace, or safety, it is, i.e. safety is, safety is here, safety from everything that can occur during it, from sicknesses and the shayateen having the ability to do any bad actions. He says, وَعَنَ بِنِ عَبَّاسٌ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ أَنْهُمَا فِي قَوْلِ اللَّهِ يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاء وَيُثْبِتْ قَالَ يُنزِلُ اللَّهُ يَنزِلُ اللَّهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا فِي شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ فَيُدَبِّرُ أَمَرَ السَّنَةِ فَيَمْحُ مَا يَشَاءُ غَيْرَ الشَّقَاءِ والسعادة ويثبت الحياة وفي لفظ قال هما كتابان يمحو الله من أحدهما ما يشاء وعنده أم الكتاب قال جملة الكتاب he says on the authority of Ibn Abbas and رضي الله تعالى عنهما that Allah regarding the statement of Allah the Most High Allah erases what He wants and He affirms or establishes what He wants he says that Allah descends to the closest sky in the month of Ramadan and he governs or determines the affair for the year. And so he erases what he wants and he establishes what he wants. And this is an, a, an issue that deals with predestination and the writing of all of the things. And the Muslim should know that Allah has written the affairs in multiple places. When we talk about the writing of predestination, that Allah Azawajal, he knew everything that was going to happen and he wrote everything that was going to happen Allah has written the predestination in multiple places at multiple times. So for example, we know that Allah he wrote everything that was going to happen before he created the creation by 50,000 years. Right? Allah says, oh, uh, The Prophet says, Salah, 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 he said that Allah, when he first created the pen, he told to it write. And he said, what should I write? He said, write everything that is going to happen. Likewise, Allah writes the affair of everybody when they're in the womb of their mother. Right? That hadith that is hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, that the creation of one of you is gathered in the womb of your mother for 40 days as a nutfa, and then 40 days as a alaqa, and then 40 days as a mudra, and then uh, the spirit is, uh, then Allah sends to it the angel, and the spirit is blown into it, and it is commanded with. Four words. I have four statements that is to be written upon the individual. This is the writing of Allah Azawajal upon the individual in his lifetime. Likewise, from the writing upon the individual is the writing that occurs in Laylatul Qadr. Right? Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. During it, every important affair is decided. So Allah writes what's going to happen for the entire year on Laylatul Qadr. Likewise, from the writing of the individual is that which happens daily or continuously, the writing of the angels on his right and his left side, that write down his actions that uh, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every asr and every fajr, and they go back. And likewise, the writing that is uh, given on Yom al-Khamis and Yom al-Ithnayn, uh, uh, the writing that the angels do on Yom al-Ithnayn and Yom al-Khamis, 
which is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to fast those days. So the writing of Allah is in a multitude of different events and different times and places. And so the question is, this statement of Allah, he erases what he wants and he leaves or he affirms what he wants. What does this apply to? When Allah erases something from your book, what does this apply to? Does it apply to Umul Kitab? And they say no, right? It doesn't apply to Umul Kitab. The, huh? Not Mahi. We say Allah erases it out of your book. Allah erases out of your book what He wants. Meaning you've done something, Allah had it documented against you or for you, most likely against you, if He erases it, and He erases what He wants. Right? So when does this ayah, what is the tafsir of this ayah? That Allah erases what He wants. Right? Does He erase from Umul Kitab? No, He doesn't erase from Umul Kitab. Right? But when does Allah erase, right? The things that were written on you in the womb of your mother, can they change? Right? Those four statements. For you, right? Those don't change. Those kitabat or thabita, they don't change. What about the writing that the angels do? Right? From that are things that a lot of his mercy has them erase. But those for the Umul Kitab already has that It's in Umul Kitab. But Allah says he erases what he wants. Tell when does Allah erase something? It's in Umul Kitab. And Umul Kitab is everything. But this ayah that says Allah erases what he wants, what does it mean Allah erases what he wants? If Umul Kitab doesn't get erased, what is Allah erasing? You understand that when we talk about tafsir and Quran and things like that, it's important not to just overlook something. You see what I'm saying? Somebody might challenge you and say, you guys say that there's no mistakes in the Quran, there's no contradictions in the Quran, right? But Allah says he sent down the Quran Layla to Qadr. But the Quran was sent down in other than Layla to Qadr. Huh? You see how important it is to understand that and know that? You see what I'm saying? If a Muslim doesn't know that, what happens? He's confused. He's like, well, that's a good point. I mean, the Quran wasn't only sent down in Laylatul Qadr. Allah says, Shahr Ramadan al unzi la al Quran. But the Quran was sent down over a 20 year period, a 23 year period. And it wasn't all in the month of Ramadan. So it's important that you understand that. He says, you guys, you Muslims say that there's no mistake, there's no contradictions in the Quran, right? Like, you all say about Umm al Kitab that Allah wrote everything that was going to happen. Right? And that kitab, لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة. That's what you say, right? لا يغادر. It doesn't leave out any small or any big. That's what you Muslims believe, right? Play. But Allah says, يَمْ حُمَّا يَشَاءَ Allah leaves out what He wants. Allah erases what He wants. What's the text here to that ayah? You see what I'm saying? If you don't understand how to explain this, a person will be able to take advantage of you in your religion. So what does Allah erase? Here he's saying the tafsir of this, he says, Ibn Abbas, he says, Allah descends to the closest sky in the month of Ramadan and he governs or determines the affair of the following year. And he erases what he wills other than unhappiness and happiness, i.e. other than the final determination, whether you'll be from the people of paradise or the people of uh, uh, the hellfire. Meaning, And other than, and he says, Allah erases what he wills other than happiness or sadness and happiness and death and life. Meaning Allah doesn't change your life. That, that kitabah that we talked about is the kitabah that the angels come with. As far as the kitabah of the angels that are on your right and your left side, Allah, he erases from that things that he wills. Meaning, yes, it's in Umm al-Kitab. But when the angels bring your ledger to Allah, for example, when two, when two slaves argue, what does Allah say about the angels that bring his book to Allah on that day on Khamis? He says, leave my slaves, maybe they'll make up before their book is brought to me. You see what I'm saying? And so Allah erases what he wants, i.e. from the things that the angels write and from things that he decided and at the same time, decided other things as well. Like we talk about if it wasn't for predestination, 
the evil eye would have took precedence. You see what I'm saying? What dua? Well, you do qadr illa dua. Nothing changes predestination except dua. What does that mean? How does predestination change? But does it's predestination? Does it change? Meaning that Allah predetermined something and predetermined that you would make dua and predetermined that this dua would affect what he predetermined in that way. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't apply according to this narration to Shaqiyun and Sayyid because Allah knew it. Because look at that hadith. And another rewire, indeed one of you all would act with the actions of the people of the hellfire until there's nothing between him and it except an arm span. And then that which was written will come forward, it will take precedence. Meaning Allah predetermined that you would be from the people of paradise. You see what I'm saying? So the Shaqi and those, those major kitabat, they don't get erased. But as far as the kitabat of the angels, the Hafazatul Kiram al Barala, the ones that write your daily actions, and then what do they erase? Scholars disagree about this. So, for example, they say the angel on your right side writes all of your good actions, and the angel on the left side writes everything else. Right? Bad actions and useless actions. Meaning scratching your head, picking your toes and things like that. And from that is what gets erased. Right? When you make toba, what happens? A toba to jubba ma qabla. It erases what was before it. So when you make toba, they erase that bad deed out of your ledger. Allah establishes what he wants and he erases what he wants. And for him is umul kita. So this is what this narration is trying to point to by Ibn Abbas. He's saying that the statement of Allah... He erases what he wants and he establishes what he wants. I, Allah descends to the closest sky in the month of Ramadan and he determines the affairs of the year and he erases what he wants other than unhappiness and happiness, i.e. other than that overall determination and predestination but uh, and likewise life and death. And in another version of this narration, he says, They are two books. I, the things that Allah erases from and establishes, it's a different book than Umm al-Kitab, right? So don't think that Allah erases what he wants and establishes what he wants is part of Umm al-Kitab. Allah says in the ayah, Umm al-Kitab. So there are two different books. He says that Allah, there are two different books. Allah erases what he wants from one of them. And with him is Umm al-Kitab. And with him is Umm al-Kitab. Right? With him is, so there are two different books. And Umm al-Kitab, he says, is Jumnatul Kitab. All of the, all of the right. Right? Umm al-Kitab is all of the things that have been written. Anyway, he says, وَقِيلَ لِلْحَسْنِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ فِي وَقَالَ وَقِيلَ لِلْحَسْنِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ فِي كُلِّ رَمَضَانٍ هِي قَالَ أَرَى وَاللَّهَ أَيْ وَاللَّهِ إِنَّهَا لَفِي كُلِّ رَمَضَانٍ إِنَّهَا لَيْلَةٌ فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ فيها يقضي الله كل أجل وعمل وخلق ورزق إلى مثلها. He says and it was said to Al Hasan, ليلة القدر is in is is ليلة القدر in every Ramadan. Is there a ليلة القدر in every Ramadan? Al Hasan he said of course. I swear by Allah it is in every Ramadan. Indeed it is a night where Allah determines during it every wise matter. And he decide, and Allah decides during it every lifespan and every action and every creation and every provision until the next, meaning until the next Laylatul Qadr. He says, "وَعَنْ سَعِيدِ بْنِ جُبَيْرٍ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ هِيَ لِأُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ مَا بَقِيَ مِنْهُمْ إِثْنَانٍ." He said, "And on the authority of Sa'id ibn Jubairin regarding Laylatul Qadr, he said it is for the Ummah of Muhammad." Meaning there will always be a Laylatul Qadr. It is for the Ummah of Muhammad as long as there are two of them left. As long as there are two Muslims left, there will still be a Laylatul Qadr. وَأَنْ كَعْبِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ نَجِدُوا هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةَ فِي كُتِبِ حُطُوطَ تُحِطُّ الظُّنُوبَ وَيُرِيدُ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ He said on the authority of Ka'bin al-Ahbar, he said نَجِدُوا هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ فِي الْكُتِبِ حُطُوطَ 
Ka'bin al-Ahbar was a Jewish person from their scholars who ended up accepting Islam. And so the Sahaba, they used to ask him questions and talk to him and he would tell them in the Tabi'een as well things that were in the Jewish scriptures. And they would find what confirms that amongst the Muslims. So in this narration, he says that we find this night in the previous books being called Hututa. That's what they used to call it, Hututa. He says, because this Hutut means to remove and wipe away and to fall off. He says, because the sins would fall off during it. I.e., he meant Laylatul Qadr. He said, قال حدثنا إسحاق قال أخبرنا سفيان عن الزهني عن أبي سلمة عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبي وفي لفظ يغفر له ما تقدم من ذنبي He said, uh, Ishaq narrated to us who said that Sufyan informed us who said about a Zuhri who said about Abi Salama or Abi Salima, who said about Abi Hurairah, who said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he said, whoever stands Laylatul Qadr with Iman and with hope, it is forgiven for him that which proceeded from his sins. And in another version of the hadith, he said, it is forgiven for him that which proceeded from his sins. It's just the difference between the past tense and the present tense verb. قال حدثنا إسحاق قال أخبرنا بقية بن الوليد قال حدثنا بحير بن بحير بن سعد عن خالد بن معدان عن عبادة بن الصامد رضي الله تعالى عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال في ليلة قدر من قامها بتقاء وجه الله غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبي He said that it was narrated to us by Ishaq who said that بقية بن الوليد informed us who said that بحير بن سعد narrated to me about Khalid ibn Ma'dan, about Ubadah ibn Samit, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said regarding Laylatul Qadr, whoever stands it hoping or seeking the face of Allah, it is forgiven for him that which proceeded from his sins. So that's the chapter regarding the encouragement, ayah of standing during Laylatul Qadr, and the value of acting during that night over all of the other nights. So if somebody asks you what's the proof, you understand that topic a little better and that Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months that don't have Laylatul Qadr in them. This next chapter, he says, After starting the conversation about Laylatul Qadr, he's now going to give us some direction about when should we be looking for it. The same way the Prophet وسلم, did. And what are the statements of the Salaf regarding when is Laylatul Qadr? And there's a lot of disagreement about when is Laylatul Qadr. Some people say it's fixed. I, it's the same night every year. And then there's disagreement about what that night is. Other scholars say, no, it moves around every year. And so some years it can be on this night and some years it can be in that night. And the only way you know it is by its signs. And they say that this is more encouraging for the believer to do more action. While other you find from the cell are those who used to just understand that it was one fixed night and it didn't change. And we mentioned that because we talked about before how a lot of times you find us criticizing a person who only comes to the masjid on the 27th or only comes to the masjid on the 23rd in Ramadan. And although he's not as good potentially as the people who seek it out the entirety of the last 10 days, meaning that was the sunnah of the prophet. Is that something criticizable that a person only comes on the night that they think it's Laylatul Qadr? It's not criticizable. We find that the Salaf, they used to do this. And we find that from the Salaf, like we mentioned the hadith of uh, Binti Um Salama, she said that if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told the people what it was, or if he knew what it was, the people would only stand that night. The goal is to catch Laylatul Qadr, right? And then to increase the month or the, the night in worship and to develop good habits. But it's nothing wrong if a person truly believes Laylatul Qadr is on this or that night for them to put the effort to do extra during that night. Well, there's disagreement that we talked about before. So we talked about the hadith, it is forgiven for him everything that he uh, proceeded from his sins. In that, there's another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, Salawat al-Khams wal-Jum'ata ila al-Jum'ata wa Ramadan ila Ramadan kafaratun ima baynahuma 
majtuni bil kaba'i that the five salawat and the Ramadan and the Jumu'ah to the Jumu'ah and the Ramadan to the Ramadan is an expiation of everything that was done between the two as long as the person stays away from major sins. So some of the scholars they say that standing Ramadan and fasting Ramadan and standing Laylatul Qadr is an expiation of the minor sins with the condition that you stay away from the major sins. Other scholars say no there's other hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith said it absolutely he didn't mention restrictions. And then there are other hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says and he returns back the way his mother gave birth to him. And so those hadith show that it expiates every sin and it forgives every sin. And that's what I hope. So this chapter he says bab talabu laylatul qadr fi al-ashr al-awakhir seeking out Laylatul Qadr during the last 10, i.e. the last 10 nights. Qala haddathana Ishaq, qala akhbarana abdatu, qala haddathana Hisham ibn Urwata an abihi an Aishita radiyallahu ta'ala anha anha qala kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yujawiru fi al-ashr al-awakhir wa kana yakulu taharraw Laylatul Qadr fi al-ashr al-awakhir min Ramadan wa fi lafzi li abi hurayrata uritu Laylatul Qadr thumma ayqadani ba'du ahli فنسيتها فلتمسوها في العشر الأواخر وفي رواية ابن عمر من كان ملتمس من كان ملتمسها فليلتمسها في العشر الأواخر ولجابر بن سمرة التمسوا ليلة القدر في العشر الأواخر كل ذلك عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says that Ishaq narrated to us who said that Abda Abda informed us who said that Hisham ibn Urwa informed us about his father about Aisha. Allah ta'ala anha that she said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to yujawir he used to al mujawara is to dedicate oneself and to spend one's time in the masjid he says that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to do this mujawara in the last during the last 10 days and he said that look for it look for laylatul qadr during the last 10 of ramadan and in a version of a hadith by Abi Hurairah, he says, I was shown Laylatul Qadr. The Prophet ﷺ said, I was shown Laylatul Qadr. And then some of my family woke me up. Meaning he was dreaming, and Allah showed him in his dream when Laylatul Qadr was going to be. And he said, he said, and some of my family woke me up, and I was caused to forget it. Right? They woke him up, and he forgot it. So seek it out during the last 10 that have gone away. The last 10 that have gone away. And this is a, an issue that they talk about. When does the last 10 start? Huh? The 20th? The 21st. Right? The stronger opinion regarding the last 10 is that they start on the 21st. Because you count from the end of the month what it would be if it was complete. Right? So the 30th night, the 29th night, the 27th night, the 28th night, the 26th night, the 25th night, the 24th night, the 23rd night, the 22nd night, the 21st night. So the last 10, they start on the 21st night, not the 20th night, as some people say. Some people say, well, what if the month is short, right? And so they say we count from the short 29 to 20. Or they say you count the first 20 days and then the 20th night is 10 after that. No, you start from the end of the month and you count what the month would be when it was complete. And there are narrations in this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to do itikaf in the first 10 of Ramadan. And then he said, it's not here. And then he used to do itikaf in the middle 10 of Ramadan, right? And then when he was finished, when he was doing itikaf in the middle 10 of Ramadan, Jabril came and told him and said, the thing that you're looking for hasn't happened yet. And so the people that were going to go home on the 21st night, the prophet told them that morning, the 21st night comes after what day? The 20th day. So the 20th day, they were in the masjid. They were going to go home that night, which would have been the 21st night. The prophet said that what you were looking for hasn't come, not, come yet. So whoever was going to do itikaf with me, stay. And that what started the last 10 nights, i.e. the 21st night. And in this narration, he says, fil tamisuha fil ashr al So seek it out in the last 10 or the 10 that are left. 
right? The last 10 that are left. And in another narration of Ibn uh, Umar, he says, whoever was going to seek it out, then let him seek it out in, during the last 10. And in a version of the Hadith of Jabir ibn Usama, he said, seek out Laylatul Qadr during the last 10. All of this has been reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the next chapter, so that's the general time to look for it. And it's important because some of the Salaf, they used to say that Laylatul Qadr, it changes every year and it can be at any time of the year. Some of the Salaf, they used to say that Laylatul Qadr isn't necessary to be in the month of Ramadan. That's what some of the Salaf used to say. That it's not necessary to be in the month of Ramadan, but that statement goes against the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu seek it out in the last 10. And so that's why it's important to understand that even though some of the Salaf they used to say, it can be any time. Like some of the Salaf they used to say that Laylatul Qadr was the 17th of Ramadan or the 19th of Ramadan as we're going to see, which is the night that they went to Bad Badr, right? Yawm al al Jam'an, when the two parties met in Laylatul in Badr. And some of them say that was Laylatul Qadr. So the important thing is to understand, yes, there's a lot of statements regarding Laylatul Qadr, but the strongest of them, and that which there's clear text in, is that the Prophet encouraged us to seek it out in the last 10 days. Play, what of the last 10 days? What part of the last 10 days should we seek it out? Chapter regarding seeking out Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10. And this is also something they disagree about. What are the odd nights of the last 10? Do you start from the beginning of the last 10 or the end of the last 10? The beginning of the last 10. All right, so the odd night would be 21st, 23rd. Okay. What about if you start from the end? Meaning when you start your count of the last 10, do you count the odd nights from the beginning of the month? Or let me word it a different way. Do you count the odd nights as the odd numbered nights, 21, 23, 25, 27? Or do you count the odd nights of the last 10 as if the last 10 start on the 21st, that's right? If you start from the end of the month, counting backwards, meaning the last nights remaining, the Odd numbers would be the even numbers. You see what I'm saying? So the first night would be, the first odd night would be the 22nd. Some scholars say you count it that way. You start from the back of the month, right? And so you're going to see differences leading to this, to this understanding. When you count the odd months, you count it from the beginning or the end. Is it 10 remaining or 10 going forward? You see what I'm saying? It's, it's anyway, he says, Chapter regarding seeking out the Laylatul Qadr in the la in the odd nights of the last ten. قال حدثنا إسحاق قال أخبرنا يزيد بن هارون قال أخبرنا حميد أن أنس أن عبادة بن الصامت رضي الله تعالى عنهما أنه قال خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يريد أن يخبرنا بليلات القدر في إذا رجلان من الأنصار تلاحيان. فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إني خرجت لأخبركم بليلة القدر وإني رأيت فلانا وفلانا يتلايحان فرفعت وعسى أن يكون خيرا التمسوها في العشر الأواخر في الوتر منها في الخامسة أو السابعة أو التاسعة He says that Ishaq narrated to us who said that Yazid ibn Harun informed us who said that Humayd informed us about Anas about Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came out and he wanted to tell the people about Laylatul Qadr. He came out and he wanted to inform the people about Laylatul Qadr. And there were two men from the Ansar who were arguing. And so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I came out to tell you all about Laylatul Qadr. And I saw so-and-so arguing, and that information has been lifted away. But perhaps it's better for you, seek it out in the last 10, in the odd from it, in the fifth night, the seventh night, or the ninth night. 
And that's where that disagreement comes in. When you say the fifth night, does he mean the 25th night or does he mean the fifth night of the 10th? Right, what would the fifth night of the 10th be? Huh? No, the 20, like, how does how it how work? Like, 21st, 23rd, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th. Right, so that's when you count from the front. But if you count from the back, it's like five remaining. And when you say the 20, the fifth, i.e. the five, the fifth night remaining, which would be the 26th. The 30th, 31st, 30th, I mean 30th, 29th, 28th, 27th, 26th, right? So is it five remaining or five coming, right? Or five that have passed or is it five remaining? They disagree about that. He says, so seek it out in the fifth or the seventh or the ninth, right? And part of the disagreement is seek it out in the five that have passed or the five that remain, the fifth that remains or the fifth that has passed or in the seventh that has remained, or the seventh that has passed, right? The seventh that remained would be earlier in the month. So you say 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. And a lot of the set of used to say it was the 24th because they say the seventh night, meaning not the 27th night, but the seventh night that remains in the last 10. And so that's all of that is part of their disagreement. He says, or the ninth, the ninth night, either the ninth night that has passed, i.e. the 29th, or the ninth night that remains, which would be the 21st. And so all of this is part of their disagreement. So if somebody tries to tell you it's this night or that night, that's why there's so much disagreement about it because of different versions of the hadith. He says, قال حدثنا إسحاق قال أخبرنا المغيرة بن سلمة المخزوم قال حدثنا عبد الواحد بن زياد قال حدثنا عاصم بن كليب قال حدثني أبي أن خاله الفلتان بن عاصم الجرمي قال كنا قعود ننتظر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فجاءنا في وجهه غضب في وجهه الغضب فحتى جلس ثم رأينا وجهه يسفر فقال إني بينت إني بينت لي ليلة القدر فخرجت لأنبئ لأبينها لكم فلقيت بسدة المسجد رجلان يتلاحيان أو قال يتقاتلان ومعهما الشيطان فحجزت بينهما فأنسيتها وسأشد وسأشد لكم منها شد وسأشد وسأشد لكم منها شدوى أما ليلة القدر فلتمسوا في فلتمسوها في العشر الأواخر. This narration is similar. He said that Ishaq informed narrated to us who said that Al Mughira ibn Sulaim Al Maghzumi informed us who said that Abdul Wahid ibn Ziyad narrated to us. Who said that Asim ibn Kulayb narrated to us who said that my father informed me about his uncle on his mother's side, Al Falatan ibn Asim al Jirmi, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that we were sitting waiting for the Prophet. We were all sitting waiting for the Prophet. So he came, and in his face you could see the anger. You could see anger in his face until he sat down. And then we saw his face, Yusfir, like become brighter. Like the anger had kind of lifted off of him and what, he, what you could see in his face had kind of went away. He says uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, I came, indeed it was shown to me or it was made clear to me what is Laylatul Qadr or when is Laylatul Qadr. And I came out to tell you all about it. And I found at the doorway of the masjid, like the entrance to the masjid, two men arguing, or he said fighting. And the shaitan was with them. And so I stood in between them and I got, went in to break it up, subhanAllah. And I was caused to forget it. And I will I'll mention to you all some of it I'll mention to you all something about it. I don't know exactly when it is, but I'm going to tell you all something about it. As far as Laylatul Qadr, then seek it out in the last 10, the odd ones. Obviously in the hadith is the benefit of the effects of sins on the community, right? And the effects of fighting amongst ourselves on the community. If these Muslims hadn't been fighting amongst themselves, we would know when Laylatul Qadr is. 
But Allah raised that information off as the evil result of some of the actions of the Muslims and how the community is affected by that. قال أبي حدثت حدثت به من عباس فقال وما أعجبك من ذلك كان عمر إذا دعا الأشياخ من أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم دعاني معهم وقال لا تتكلم حتى يتكلموا فدعاني ذات يوم أو ليلة فقال إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال في ليلة القدر ما قد علمتم التمسوها في العشر الأواخر وترى ففي أي وتر ترونها فقال كل رجل برأيه تاسعة أو سابعة أو خامسة أو ثالثة فقال لي ما لك لا تتكلم يا ابن عباس فقلت يا أمير المؤمنين إن شئت تكلمت فقال ما دعوتك إلا لتتكلم فقلت إنما أقول برأيي فقال أن رأيك أن رأيك أسأل أن رأيك أسألك فقلت إني سمعت الله أكثر ذكر السبع فذكر السماوات السبعة والأرضين السبعة حتى قال فيما قال وما أنبتت وما أنبتت وما أنبتت الأرض سبعة فقلت له كلما قلت قد عرفته غير هذا ما تعني بقولك ما أنبتت الأرض سبعة فقال ثم شققنا الأرض شقا فأنبتنا فيها حبا وعنبا وقبا وزيتونا ونخلا وحدائك غلبا وفاكهة وأبا فالحدائق كل ملتف حديقة والأب ما أنبتت الأرض مما لا يأكل الناس فقال عمر أعجزتم أن تقولوا مثل ما قال هذا الغلام الذي لم يستوي شوى رأسه ثم قال إني كنت نهيتك أن تتكلم معهم فإذا دعوتك فتكلم معهم So at the end of that last narration the narrator's father he said that and my father said, so I told this information. I this information of Feltan ibn Asim al Jirmi. He said, I narrated that to Ibn Abbas. Right? Seek out Laylatul Qadr during the last ten, the odd nights. And so Ibn Abbas ta'ala he said, and what's so surprising about that? Indeed, Umar, he used to call me to accompany the elders from the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or no, he said that Umar, he used to call the elders of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he used to invite me along with them. And he said to me, don't say anything until they talk. Right? Ibn Abbas is a young kid. Ibn Abbas was probably 13 when the Prophet died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar is inviting him along with the elders of Quraysh. Right? The elders from the elder sahaba of the sahaba of the Prophet. By the time Umar is the Khalifa, Ibn Abbas is 15, right? Because he was 13 when the Prophet died. So he's about a 15-year-old kid, just reached puberty. And he says to him, you don't say anything until they talk. You don't talk until they talk. And so he called me one day or one night and he said, indeed, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said about Laylatul Qadr, that which you all know. Seek it out during the last 10, the odd ones. So what, which of the odd ones do you all think it is? Which of the odd nights do you all think it is? So every person gave their opinion. Some of them said it's the ninth. Some of them said the seventh. Some of them said the fifth. Some of them said the third. And he said to me, I Umar said to Ibn Abbas, what's wrong with you? Why are you not talking? And he said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, oh, leader of the believers, if you want, I could talk. He said, I didn't invite you here except so you could talk. He said, but if I talk, I'm only going to use my opinion. He said, indeed, I'm only asking you about your opinion. He said, so indeed, I have heard Allah. I, how does Ibn Abbas say he heard Allah? Uh, that's an important proof for what? Huh? Ibn Abbas said he heard Allah. Huh? Surprise. That's the speech of Allah. Oh, okay. The Quran is the speech of Allah. Because it, it's not okay for me. To, if you say something, can I say I heard Allah? But if you tell me, Qul hu Allahu ahad, who said that? Allah. Allah. You see what I'm saying? So even, and that's what, the same thing in the Quran, Allah says, We either uh, Right? Who does he hear the speech of Allah from? No, no, no. He hears it from us. Yeah? But what is he hearing? I heard Allah. 
And he says, indeed, how often I hear Allah. So if somebody tries to tell you that the Sahaba understand that it's the speech of Allah it wasn't created. We say, yeah, Ibn Abbas said, I heard Allah. Right? He didn't hear Allah directly, but he heard the speech of Allah. And that's good enough for him to say, I heard Allah. He says, indeed, I often hear Allah mentioning sevens. Allah often mentions sevens. Right? Allah often mentions sevens. He said, so Allah created the sky in sevens, and he created the earth in sevens. And from that which the earth produces, Allah mentioned it in sevens. So Umar said to him, everything that you said, I already know. I know that Allah created the skies in seven. I know that Allah created the earth in sevens, except this. I don't understand this, what you're talking about. What do you mean that the earth produces sevens? The things that the earth produces are in sevens. He said, Allah says, Thumma shaqqa, and then we cleave open the earth. We open up the earth, right? And what happens? We produced out of it seeds, and grapes, and qadb, right? Cain, وزيتون, and ونخلة. And olives and uh, palm trees, gulba, uh, and gardens uh, thick, gulba. That's fine. Was they tuning with nakhla? Wahadaika gulba, wafakiha ten, wahabba. Right? So these are seven things that the earth produces. Habba, wa'ina ben, wakabba, was they tuning with nakhla? Wahadaika gulba. Right, because they tune in wa nakla. He uh, see this is the issue now, because that's more than seven now. فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّ وَعِنَبًا وَقَبَّ وَزَيْتُونًا وَنَخْلَ وَحَد Okay, yeah, because hadaika is all of those things, just gardens, and then because gardens or orchards, they're not the things that the earth produces. The earth produces orchards of all of those things. Right, so Hada'ika is not part of it. So he says, in Hada'ik, Ibn Abbas, he says, in Hada'ik is every thick, like wrapped around garden, right? When a garden is thick and the, the, the things that grow in it are like wrapped around each other, like a real thick, lush garden, that's a Hadiqa. And he says, and as far as al Al, then that is from what the earth produces, from that which people don't eat. Right? El Ab is the grasses that the earth produces that people don't eat, like the stuff that their animals eat. Umar. So Umar said, after Ibn Abbas said this, you all, talking to the elders of Quraysh, were unable to say something similar to what this young child has said, who the hair on his hair, the hair on his head hasn't started to straighten out yet. He's still got curly little baby hair. It hasn't straightened out yet. He said, and then he said, indeed, I used to tell you, I even our bass, I used to forbid you from talking along with them. He told you, don't say anything till they talk. Now, when I call you, you can go ahead and talk along with them. All right, so that's just showing you the value that Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar had for Ibn Abbas. But the point here is that Ibn Abbas deemed that Laylatul Qadr was on what night? The seventh, the 27th, right? Because he said Allah often mentions sevens. He said on the authority of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan that Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night. The 27th night. That's clear. And that was the opinion of Muawiyah and likewise Ibn Abbas that it's the 27th night. قَالَ حَدَّثْنَا عُبَيْنُ اللَّهِ بِنْ مُعَادٍ قَالَ حَدَّثْنَا بِهِ قَالَ حَدَّثْنَا شُعْبَةُ أَنْ قَتَادَةَ سَمِئَ مُطَرَّفًا أَنْ مُعَاوِيَةَ بِنْ أَبِي سُفْيَانَ أَنَ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم في ليلة القدر قال ليلة السبع وعشرين He said that عُبَيْنُ اللَّهِ بِنْ مُعَاد narrated to us who said that my father narrated to us who said that شُعْبَ narrated to us who said about قَتَادَ who said that he heard مُطَرَّف was a, a scholar of the uh, Tabi'een. He said that I heard about Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, who said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said Laylatul Qadr is the 29th night. 
just for a benefit. So that's the hadith. It's a hadith from the Prophet that he said Layla al Qadr is the 27th, not 29th, the 27th night. That narration is Sahih according to the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. Right? It's not in Bukhari and Muslim, but the chain is just as good as the ones in Bukhari and Muslim. He says, قال حدثنا محمد بن يحيى قال حدثنا علي بن عاصم عن الجريري عن عبد الله بن بريدة عن معاوية أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم التمس ليلة القدر آخر آخر ليلة من رمضان. Now there's another narration. He says that Muhammad ibn Yahya narrated to us. He said that Ali ibn Asim narrated to us who said about al Jureiri, who said about Abdullah ibn Buraida, who said about Muawiyah, that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said seek out ليلة القدر in the last night of Ramadan. The last night of Ramadan. What night is that? Or 30, which is 30 days, right? So now you see, and this is also a hadith. Now this hadith is sahih as well in its chain. It's also authentic. And this is why you see the setup, they disagree. Some of them say it's the same night every night. Others say, no, it changes every year. Because that's the only way to put all of these hadith and all of these statements together is that Laylatul Qadr has to change every year. It can be a different night every year. قال حدثنا يحيى أن مالك أن نافع أن أبي عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رجالا من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أروا ليلة القدر في المنام في السبع الأواخر فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني أرى رؤياكم قد تواطأت في السبع الأواخر فمن كان متحريها فليتحرها في السبع الأواخر He says that Yahya narrated to us about Malik, about Nafi, about Ibn Umar That chain is authentic that's from the best chains. He said that a group of men uh, from the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were shown, i.e. in a dream, that Laylatul Qadr, uh, they were shown in a dream that Laylatul Qadr was in the last seven. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, indeed, I believe that all of your dreams have matched each other. I see all of your dreams have matched each other regarding the last seven. So whoever is looking for it, then look for it in the last seven. قال حدثنا محمد بن يحيى قال حدثنا أحمد بن خالد الوهبي قال حدثنا محمد بن إسحاق أن معاذ بن عبد الله أن أخيه أنه قال قال أنه قال جلس إلينا عبد الله بن أونيس فقلنا له هل سمعت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذه الليلة المباركة من شيء قال نعم جلسنا إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم آخر هذا الشهر فقلنا له يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم متلنا الكنيس هذه الليلة المباركة فقال الكنيسها الكنيسها هذه الليلة لمساء ثلاث وعشرين فقال رجل من القوم فهي إذا أولى ثمان فإنها ليست بأولى ثمان ولكن أولى سبع إن الشهر لا يتم نعم so this narration shows us some more of the disagreement they said that محمد بن يحيى narrated to us who said that أحمد بن خالد الوهبي Narrated to us who said that Muhammad ibn Ishaq Narrated to us who said about Mu'adh ibn Abdullah Who said about his brother That he said we all sat around Abdullah ibn Unais radiallahu ta'ala an, And we said to him Have you heard from the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Anything regarding this blessed night Ayy al-Qadr And he said yes We were all sitting around the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam During the end of the month and so we said to him, O Messenger of Allah, when should we look or when should we, when should we be searching for this blessed night? And he said, seek out this blessed night the evening of the 23rd. All right, the evening of the 23rd. And so the question of the narrator, he says, so, I, so a man from the people said, so it is the beginning of the 8th. Beginning of the eight, right? So you start the, the twenty, the last ten nights. You got the twenty first, twenty second, twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh, twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirtieth. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Seek it out the evening of the twenty third." So you got the evening of the twenty first, the evening of the twenty second, the evening of the twenty eighth. How many days are left at the evening of the twenty eighth? Eight. 
yet left. You got the 20, the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th. So the person hearing this narration, he said, so it's the beginning of the last eight. Meaning we should be looking for it during the last eight. Right. So therefore, the, the evening of the 23rd is the last eight. He said, he said, no, it's not the last of the it's not the beginning of the last eight, but it's the beginning of the last seven because the month won't be complete. This is what this is the hadith that I mentioned. I read it wrong. Let's read it again. He says, so we were sitting with the prophet. So I mean, we said, when should we seek out this blessed night? So the prophet وسلم, said, seek it out the evening of the 23rd. And so a person amongst the Sahaba, a man that was there with them, they said, so you mean the, the, the beginning of the eighth night remaining? When there's eight nights left, that's when she, we should be looking for it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's not the beginning of the eight, but instead it's the beginning of the seven because the month won't be complete. So that month only had 29 nights in it. So the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. That's the last seven nights. Why is that relevant? That year it did. What about when the month is 30 days? Should you look for it during the last seven or from the 23rd? Like the last narration said, look for it during what time? The last, no, it said the last seven. The last narration we just read said, look, look for it. And during the last, see all of your dreams have come together. Look for it during the last seven. When is the last seven start? 24th. Twenty-fourth. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. Right. That's the start of the last seven. If the month is complete, if the month is short, the start of the last seven is the 23rd because the month is going to be missing a day. So the point is, is that that's where you see all of this disagreement start to happen because it's like, OK, do I count the month as a complete month or a short month? Do I count the even days as the even numbered days or do I count them as the odd numbered days? Because if the month is short, it's an even number. Or do I count it from the end of the month or the beginning of the month? All of these things. This is why you find so many scholars saying that the month, the night changes every year. Because all of these narrations, a lot of them are authentic. You have the prophet saying, I forgot it. Then you have another narration saying he told him. Right? The hadith of Muawi said he told him it's the 27th night. How did, I thought you forgot it. How did you tell us? Meaning different years. Right? He says, uh, now, this hadith where the prophet said, look for it during the last seven in an incomplete month. The last narration said, look for it in the last seven, generally speaking. قال حدثنا محمد بن يحيى قال حدثنا أحمد بن خالد قال حدثنا محمد بن إسحاق عن محمد بن إبراهيم بن الحارث أنه قال حدثني ابن عبد الله بن أنيس رضي الله تعالى أمي رحمه الله عن أبيه أنه قال قال رسول الله قال لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني أكون ببادية وإني بحمد الله أصلي بهم فمرني بليلة من هذا الشهر أنزلها إلى المسجد فأصليها في قال إنزل ليلة ثلاث وعشرين فأصليها في فإن أحببت أن أن تستتم آخر الشهر فافعل وإن أحببت فكف فكان إذا صلى العصر دخل المشد فلم يخرج إلا في حاجة حتى يصل الصبح فإذا صلى الصبح كادت كانت دابته بباب المشد. Right, so this is a hadith regarding the criticism of the people who come just on a particular night. He says that Muhammad ibn Yahya narrated to us who said that Ahmed ibn Khalid narrated to us who said that Muhammad ibn Ishaq narrated to us about Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn al-Harith who said that uh, Ibn Abdullah ibn Unais narrated to me about his father, i.e. Abdullah ibn Unais, the same person who narrated the last hadith, who said that I said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed, I'll be in the desert. I'll be out in the, the open area, the badia, right? The world, the badia, the desert. And Alhamdulillah, I will pray with them there. When I'm in the Badi, I pray with the people there. But command me with a specific night in this month that I can come to the masjid and pray it there. 
Like, tell me what night I should come to the masjid to pray with you all in the masjid. Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, come the 23rd night and pray it with and pray it there. Because, and if you want to, if you like to continue to the end of the month, then do so. And if you like, that's enough. Right? So what's that show us? Uh, it's as if the Prophet is telling them the late of the is the 23rd night. If you want to come to the mat, you want to make sure you get it, come to the mat, you pray with us that night. And if you want to complete the rest of the month, then that's good. But if not, it's okay. You did enough. You see what I'm saying? He said, so when it when he prayed also, he entered the masjid, and this tells us when do you start itikaf? This is another important question. The people who want to do itikaf, when do you enter into the masjid? Before Maghrib, after Asr. Right? Sometime after Asr, before Maghrib. He says that when he prayed Asr, he would go into the masjid and he would not leave the masjid except for a need. This is another important thing that a lot of people miss in itikaf. You are not supposed to leave the masjid for anything except needs like using the bathroom making wudu you're not supposed to visit a sick person you're not supposed to go to the store you shouldn't even leave for food if you have somebody bringing it to you right if somebody will bring you food like alhamdulillah a lot of the masjid they prepare meals in the masjid you shouldn't leave the masjid if you're doing a tikat you should only leave for a need he said so this person abdullah bin unais he would enter the masjid after Asr and he would not leave except for a need until he prayed Fajr, which tells us when do you leave Itikaf? After Fajr, right? Some people say, no, you can't leave until. Uh, until Maghrib the next night, because you have to spend a day in Itikaf. Huh? Meaning you enter before Maghrib, so you get there for Maghrib, and you leave after Maghrib, so you spend a whole day in Itikaf. The point is that this narration is a... So some scholars say, how long does Itikaf have to be? Huh? It has to be a day. Can you do Itikaf for an hour? Yeah. Some scholars say yes. Some scholars say no, you can't do Itikaf for an hour. Meaning right now, can I make anti calf right now for an hour? And the scholars who say yes, they say it's important that when you go to the masjid, you should always make your intention to do what? Anti calf. Right. Because you get the reward of doing anti calf. Huh? If you believe that it's okay to do anti calf for less than a day, yes. Other scholars say no, you have to do itikaf for a complete day. It has to be a day. It has to be. Right? There's narrations about it. But this this Sahabi right here, how long did he do itikaf for? He did it from Maghrib. Now he entered after Asr. So itikaf started at Maghrib. And he did it until Fajr. He left after Fajr. So did he do it for a full day? So that shows you the people who say you can do itikaf for less than a day. This is an evidence for them. The prophet didn't criticize it. The prophet didn't tell him, no, you got to stay where you go. I thought you were doing itikaf. A person can argue and say he wasn't doing itikaf. He was just coming to do what? He was just coming to pray with the people. His intention wasn't itikaf. His intention was to pray with the people Layla Til Qadr. And Layla Til Qadr started at Maghrib and ended at so he left. See what I'm saying? So it's not really a proof. You can make it not a proof for the people who say you can do ATCAP less than a day. But the people who say you can do ATCAP for less than a day, they might try to use this as a proof. He entered in and he left early. Anyway, he said, so when he when when when, when it was when he prayed, also he would enter the masjid and he wouldn't come out except for a need until he prayed Salat al-Sup, the morning prayer. And then once he finished praying Salat al-Sup, uh, his 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 riding animal was at the door of the masjid, right? I mean, he, he left his animal was still there at the door of the masjid waiting. Uthman and Abu Nadri and Busir ibn Sa'id and Abdullah ibn Unais and Sulami 
رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أريت ليلة القدر فأنسيتها فأنسي فأنس فأنسيتها وأوراني 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 أسجد في ماء وطين وكان سقف المسجد عريشا من جليل وسعة فرأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سجد في الماء والطين صبيحة ثلاثة وعشرين من رمضان he said that Harun al-Hammal narrated to us. He said that Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Mabzumi narrated to us. He said that Sulaiman ibn Bilal narrated to me about Dhaqaq ibn Uthman, about Abi Nadr, about Busr ibn Sa'id, about Abdullah ibn Unais, that same companion, a Sulami. He said that the Prophet sallallahu he said, I was shown Laylatul Qadr and then I was caused to forget it. And I see myself prostrating in water and mud. He says, and the masjid's roof was made out of uh, like a, 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 a layer of date palm bark and leaves. And he said, uh, meaning that the roof wasn't brick, it wasn't plastic, water would get into the masjid. And it would cause the masjid to get water inside and the dirt in the ground to turn into mud. He said, and I saw the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, making sujood in water and mud. The morning of the 23rd of Ramadan. So according to this hadith, Laylatul al Qadr was what? The 23rd night. Because that morning, he was prostrating in water and mud. As the Prophet said, I see myself prostrating in water and mud. He says in Ibn Abbas, he used to sprinkle water on his family on the 23rd night of Ramadan to wake them up. Signaling that he thought Laylatul al Qadr was the 23rd night. Even though we have the other narration where he said it was the 27th. But maybe his seven there means seven remain. Right? That's why all this disagreement. He says, وكان أبو ذر إذا كان ليلة ثلاث وعشرين من رمضان أمر بثيابه فغسلت وأجمرت ثم قام تلك الليلة وهي ليلة الثالث 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 وعشرين. He says Abu Dhar, when it was the twenty-third night of Ramadan, he would command that his clothes be gathered and washed and perfumed, and then he would stand that entire night, and that was the twenty-third night. Like what, what night is it tonight? Because yesterday was the 25th. Yeah, tonight's the 26th. قَالَ بَابُ طَلْبِ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةِ إِحْدَى وَعِشْرِينَ So in that last chapter, we got to look for it in the last 10, the last 7, the 27th, the 21st, the 23rd. Right? Specifically the 27th and the 23rd. He says, بَابُ طَلْبِ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةِ إِحْدَى وَعِشْرِينَ Chapter regarding looking for Layla to the Qadr on the 21st night. We also got the 20, the last night was the same with Ali. He says, so, so if you just look at the nights that we got, we got the last night, which can be 29 or 30. We got 27 and we got 23 mentioned so far. So that's already four nights out of the last 10 that have been confirmed as Layla to Qadr by somebody. قال حدثنا أبو موسى إسحاق بن موسى الأنصاري قال حدثنا معن قال حد معن قال حدثنا مالك أن يزيد بن عبد الله بن الهادي أن محمد بن إبراهيم التيمي أن أبي سلمة أن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنهما أنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعتقد عشر الأوسط من شهر رمضان فاعتقف عاما حتى إذا كانت ليلة إحدى وعشرين التي يخرج فيها من اعتكافه قال من اعتقف معي فليعتكف العشر الأواخر وقد رأيت هذه الليلة ثم أنسيتها وقد رأيتني أشجل في ماء وطين وقد رأيتني أشجل في ماء وطين فالتمسها في كل وتر قال أبو سعيد وأمطرت تلك الليلة وكان المسجد على عريش فوقف المسجد قال أبو سعيد فأبصرت عينا فأبصرت عينا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وانصرف علينا وعلى جبهته وأنفه أثر الماء والطين من صبيهة إحدى وعشرين I love this right here. The last narration was the narration of Abdullah bin Unais. He said the prophet said I was caused to forget it and I see myself prostrating in water and mud. Right? And the mash's roof was made out of what? Date palm leaves, date uh, palm leaves and palm bark. And he said, I saw the prophet, I saw the prophet, the 23rd, prostrating in water and mud, right? 
This narration, he says, حدثنا أبو موسى, that Abu Musa is happy to Musa al-Ansari. He narrated to us, he said that Ma'an narrated to us, who said that Malik narrated to us about Yazid ibn Abdullah ibn, ha- ibn al-Had, who said about Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al-Taymi, who said about Abi Salima, who said about Abi Sa'id al-Khudri. So that was Abdullah ibn Unais, this is Abi Sa'id al-Khudri. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to do itikaf during the middle 10 of the month of Ramadan. He used to do itikaf during the middle 10 of Ramadan. And so he made itikaf one year until it was the night of the 21st, right? Meaning Maghrib on the 21st night. The, uh, until it was the night of the 21st, the night that he would normally leave from his itikaf. So normally on the 21st night, he would leave when he used to do it in the middle 10. That shows us that the last 10 starts when? The 21st. He said, when it was the night of the 21st, when he would normally leave his itikaf, he said, whoever was making itikaf with me, then let him make itikaf during the last 10. For indeed, I've been shown Laylatul Qadr, and then I was caused to forget it. And I see myself prostrating in water and mud. So seek it out in every odd, I, every odd night. Abu Sa'id, he said, and it rained that same night, right? What night is that? 21st. He said, it rained that same night. And the mesh was made of this thin layer, I of date palm, palm wood and, and leaves. And so the masjid wakatha, i.e. the water began to pour into the masjid from the roof. Abu Sa'id, he said, and my own two eyes saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was leaving from us, i.e. leaving after Fajr, and on his forehead and his nose, there was traces of water and mud. And that was the morning of the 21st. So that's the same story as Abdullah bin Unais. But it's just, it's just beautiful to think like, yeah, it rained, but it probably rained two nights in a row. And he postured each night on mud and dirt. So which night was later to Qadr? Was it the 21st or the 23rd? Because both nights he postrated on water and mud. And Abdullah would say, no, it's the 23rd. I saw that. And Abu Sa'id would say, no, I saw him on the 21st. So now we got 21st, 30th, 29th, 27th. Right? Or 30th, 29th, 30th, 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 عن بلال أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ليلة القدر ليلة أربع وعشرين. He says that uh, Abu Walid Ahmed ibn Bakkar narrated to us who said that uh, Al Walid narrated to us who said that Ibn Lahia narrated to us about Yazid ibn Abi Habib about the father of Al Khair Abi Al Khair who said about Al Sunabihi who said about Bilal who said about the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said. Laylatul Qadr is the 24th night. قال حدثنا إسحاق قال أخبرنا الثقفين قال حدثنا خالد الحذاء عن إكرمة عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال التمسوا ليلة القدر في أربع وعشرين He said that Ishaq narrated to us who said that الثقفي informed us who said that Khalid الحذاء narrated to us about إكرمة about ابن عباس about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, seek out Laylatul Qadr during the 24th night. قال حدثنا محمد بن المثنى قال حدثنا معاذ بن هشام قال حدثني أبي عن قتادة عن عكرمة عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رجلا قال يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني شيخ كبير عليل يشق علي القيامة فمرني بليلة لعل الله يوفقني فيها لليلة القدر قال عليك بالسابعة he says that Muhammad ibn Muthanna narrated to us who said that Mu'adh ibn Hisham narrated to us who said that my father narrated to me about Qatada, about Ikrimah, about Ibn Abbasin, that, that a man said, O Messenger of Allah, indeed I'm an old man who's weak and it's hard for me to stand, I in prayer. So command me with a night that perhaps Allah will give me success to catch Laylatul Qadr in it. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, upon you is the seventh. So what does that mean? Seven nights remain. 
24. All right, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. So that's what we said. Like when he says the seventh or the fifth, scholars disagree. Do you count from the beginning or do you count from the end? All right, you count from the beginning, 1, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. If you count from the end, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. And this hadith in this chapter is showing us here that upon you is the seventh, I upon you is seven nights remaining. I'm sorry, seven nights remain. Yeah, upon you is seven nights remain, i.e. the 24th. If, if, if 29, you're going to be... Uh, if it was 29, then it would be the 23rd. 23rd. Right? But here, this chapter, the author brought the hadith in what chapter? Chapter, look for Ramadan in the 24th night. The man said, what night should I look for Layla? The cousin of the prophet said, look for it in the 7th. I the 7th night remaining. There, this is the first of the last seven nights. So look for it in the, the seventh, i.e. The, the seventh night remaining. It's just about how you understand. If I say look for it in the fifth, the fifth what? Remaining or remaining? Exactly. It could be remaining or it could be the fifth that passed. But here, it seems that the author is using it to mean the seventh that remains, which would be the 24th night. So now we have five different statements about when Laylatul Qadr is. He said, Imam Malik was asked about the seventh and the ninth. And he said, I don't know. Meaning, is the seventh night remaining or the ninth night remaining later to Qadr? He said, I don't know. Which would be the 22nd and the 24th. He says, chapter regarding seeking it out on the 27th night. So this is a repetition of some of the nights that were already mentioned. He said, قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا مُحَمِّدَ بِنُّ يَحْيَىٰ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا عَبْدُ الْوَزَّاءَ قَالَ أَخْبَرَنَا سُفِيَانٌ عَنْ عَاصِمًا عَنْ زِرٍ عَنْ زِرٍ أَنَّهُ قَالَ قُلْتُ لِي أُبَيِّ بِنِي كَعْبٍ أَخْبِرْنِي أَنْ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ فَإِنَّ بِنَ أُمِّ عَبْدٍ يَقُولُ مَنْ يَكُمْ الْحَوْلَ يُصُدْحَا فَقَالَ يَرْحَمُ اللَّهُ أَبَا عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ لَقَدْ عَلِمَ أَنَّهَا فِي رَمَضَانِ وَلَكِنَّهُ عَمَّا عَلَى النَّاسِ لَأَنْ لَا يَتَّكِلُوا وَالَّذِي أَنْزَلَ الْكِتَابَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم إنها لفي رمضان وإنها لليلة وإنها لليلة السبع وعشرين سبحان الله قلت أني أن علمت ذاك أن علمت ذلك قال بالآية التي أخبرنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقدرنا وحفظنا فوالله إنها لهي ما يستثنى قلت لي زر ما هي وما الآية قال أن تطلع الشمس الغدات إذا إذ كأنها طص ليس لها شعاع شعاع He says that Muhammad ibn Yahya narrated to us who said that Abdul Razak narrated to us who said that Sufyan informed us about Asim about Zir Now this chain Asim ibn Abi Bahdala, that's the Asim that we recite Quran on, right? That's the same Asim ibn Abi Najud, Asim ibn Bahdala, right? Ibn Abi Najud. But some of them say he was a little weak in hadith, right? He's the scholar of Quran, but a little weak in hadith. But others say no, his narrations about things that relate to Quran are strong. And obviously, Layla to Qadr. Him narrating on Zir ibn Hubaysh, the, the person he narrated the Quran from, it's that same chain. So he says, Muhammad ibn Yahya, authentic, Hadathna Abdul Raza, Sanani, Sheikh, Hadathna Sufyan, Ibn Uyayn, Imam, on Asim, Ibn Abi, Ibn Abi, Ibn Abi, Ibn Abi Najud, on Zir ibn Hubaysh. So this chain is, is okay. He said that Zir said, I said to Ubay ibn Ka'b, inform me about when is Layla Til Qadr. Tell me when is Layla Til Qadr. Because indeed the son of the mother of the slave, Ibn Ummi Ab, which is what they used to call Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Ummi Ab, the son of the mother of the slave. He claims that whoever stands the whole year will get Layla Til Qadr. Ibn Mas'ud used to say, you want Layla Til Qadr? You got to stand the whole year. That's the only way you know you got it. So Ubay Ibn Ikab, he said, may Allah have mercy on Abu Abdul Rahman. May Allah have mercy on Ibn Mas'ud. Indeed, he knows that it's in Ramadan. He knows it's in Ramadan, but he wanted to blind the people from it so they wouldn't rely, so they wouldn't like, be dependent on only doing it in Ramadan. And I swear, 
Subhanallah, this is a strong statement from Ubay. Wallahi, he said, Wallahi anzal al kitab, anzal al kitab ala Muhammad. And I swear by the one who sent the, the book down upon Muhammad, it is in Ramadan. And it is the 27th night. I said, and how you know it's the 27th night? Now, this is important for the people who say it's the same night every year. Because he's saying this before the 27th night. It's not like he's saying it after the fact where somebody would say, well, it was just the 27th night that year. He said, wallahi, it's the 27th night. And he said that before the 27th night. He said, how do you know it's the 27th night? He said, because of the sign that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us about. And so we counted it, or we looked for it, and we memorized it. And, and wallahi, it is it, i.e. it is the 27th, and there are no exceptions. And he didn't say inshallah, right? Wallahi, it's the 27th night. What about you, Stephen? I don't got to say inshallah, not like that. It's the 27th night. Mm -hmm. So I said to Zir, Awesome said, I said to Zir, and what's the sign that he told you about? He said that the sun will rise that morning as if it is like a flat blank plate that doesn't have any rays. The sun will rise the morning after Laylatul Qadr, like pale without the, the sharp rays that it usually has. Some of the scholars, they say the reason for this is the ascension of all of the angels. It blocks out the rays of the sun. And so you look for the sun after the night of Laylatul Qadr, it will rise pale. Huh? Everybody used to do it. And that goes back to the statement that we talked about at the beginning. Don't, now don't let me catch one of y'all saying, last night was Laylatul Qadr. And then the next night, go, no, 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 last night was Laylatul Qadr, right? Because people do it. They look and that's one of the things you do. From the things that happen Laylatul Qadr is what? From the signs they usually talk about, rain. It rained last night. He'd be like, man, I didn't look at the sun last night. I should look at the sun this morning. You see what I'm saying? Because they, they, the prophet said, I see myself posturing in water and, 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 and mud. And so they say, from the signs of Laylatul Qadr, it rains. From the signs of Laylatul Qadr is that it's a quiet night. You don't hear dogs barking and chirping and stuff like that at nighttime. Right? Why? Because of Salam. It's calm until the coming of the Fajr. Right? So these are all signs that a person can look for and be like, yeah, I think last night was Laylatul Qadr. What was last night? Uh, the 25th. Right? Man, we ain't got no statements where anybody said it was the 25th, though. It was the 24th. And they're like, yeah, that was Laylatul Qadr. But it might rain tonight. The storm last night, was that a safe storm? He was like, oh, that wasn't safety, man. That don't seem like it was Laylatul Qadr's safety right there. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's quiet, it's peaceful. If it stays like this at night time, you'll be like, man, maybe tonight's Laylatul Qadr. Well, some people say Friday, too. So it's like the odd number happens to be Friday. Yeah, maybe. He said, so, he said, what is the sign? He said, the sun rises pale and flat and it doesn't have any rays. He said, chapter regarding seeking it out on the 17th night and the 19th night. يوم الفرقان يوم التقى الجمعان وواحدة وعشرين وثلاث وعشرين فإنها لا تكون إلا في وجه وفي لفظ التمس في سبعة عشرة أو تسعة عشر أو إحدى وعشرين أو ثلاث وعشرين وهو يقول أما في سبعة عشرة أو تسعة عشرة فإن صبيحتها يوم بدر وقرأ وما أنزلنا على عبدنا يوم الفرقان يوم التقى الجمعان On the authority of Ibn Mas'ud and he said look for ليلة القدر the 17th night passed, meaning start from the beginning and count 17. The 17th night passed of Ramadan, the morning before the Battle of Badr, right? That's the morning of the Battle of Badr. The 17th night, the 17th day is when they fought Badr. And that's the day known as Yom Al-Furqan, right? That Allah calls that in the Quran, Yom Al-Furqan. What happens on Laylatul al Qadr? Yufrafu, kullu amr al-hakim, right? Yom al-Furqan. 
And Allah says, He says, He also calls it the day when the two parties met. And also look for it on the 21st or the 23rd. And it will only be, this is the statement of Ibn Abbas, it will only be on the odd nights. And in a version of his, I mean, Mr. I'm sorry. And in a version of his, he said, seek it out in the 17th or the 19th or the 21st or the third or the 23rd. And he said, as far as the 17th or the 19th, and that is the morning before Badr. And he recited the ayah, And we did not send down upon our slave, or that which we sent down upon our slave on the day of Furqan, the day where the two parties met. And so he's usually like, what did Allah send down? Allah sent down the Quran. When did Allah send down the Quran? They let him cut it. Right? When did Allah send down? Right, so he's saying that that was in better. So that was the 17th or the 19th night of Ramadan. He said, on the authority of Khalid ibn Zayd, on the authority of Zayd ibn Thabit, his father, Zayd ibn Thabit, he said that he used to not enliven any night from the month of Ramadan the way he would enliven the 27th night. And the 23rd night, and Khalid just said, and nor any night like the 17th night, meaning these three nights Zayd used to really give importance to. And he would wake up the morning after, or he would enter the morning after, and upon his forehead was the prostration mark. And like that's the dent in the, the pus yellow, like the discoloration from the effects of staying up all night. So he mentioned the 17th as well. And Zayd used to say, that's the night that Allah sent down the Quran, the 17th night of Ramadan. And that's the night where Allah honored Islam by the Muslims beating Quraysh. And that's the night where Allah disgraced the leaders of disbelief. And he determined in that morning or separated and clarified in that morning between the truth and falsehood. And so all of that is a sign that he uses to say that it's the 17th night. He said on the authority of Urwat ibn Zubair that the first battle that the Prophet witnessed was the Battle of Badr. And they met for the Battle of Badr on Jumu'ah, the 17th, I'm sorry, the 19th or the 17th night past of Ramadan. <laughs> so this next chapter, after he talked about the different statements, he's going to talk about some of the signs to identify what is Layla to Qadr. So we mentioned the 27th, the 29th, the 30th, the 24th, the 21st, the 23rd, the 17th, and the 19th. All of these have been statements about when Laylatul Qadr could be, as well as during the last 10, the last 7, the last 9, like this. Chapter regarding the signs of Laylatul Qadr. قال حدثنا إسحاق قال أخبرنا بقية قال حدثني بحير بن سعد أن خالد بن معدان عن عبادة بن صامت رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال إن أمارة ليلة القدر أنها ليلة صافية مليحة كأن فيها قمرا ساطعة ساكنة لا حر فيها ولا برد ولا يحل لكوكب أن يرمى فيها بنجم حتى الصباح وإن أمارة الشمس صبيحتها أن تجري لا شعاع لها مثل القمر ليلة البدر ولا يحل لشيطان أن يخرج معها يومئذ. He says that on the authority of Ishaq, he said that Ishaq informed us, I'm sorry, Ishaq narrated to us, he said that Baqiyah informed us, he said that Bahir ibn Sa'd narrated to me about Khalid ibn Ma'dan, about Ubadah ibn Samit, who said that about the Messenger of Allah, he said that 
The sign of Laylatul Qadr is that it is a clear, pleasant night. It is a night that is clear, it's pure and pleasant. Safiya, like free of any defects, Meliha, enjoyable and pleasant. He said, and it's as if the moon during it would be like Safiya, like, hmm. Safiya is like clear, like Safiya. How can you try like that? It's like brilliant, like sata'a. He says sata'a, a sata' kulli shayin in tashra or irtafa min in barqin or gubarin or nur. Right? Sata'a is anything that is spread and high and visible from lightning or dust or light. So the moon will be sata'a. It'll be like bright and brilliant during that night. He said, and it will be calm. It won't be hot, nor will it be cold. And it's not allowed for any star during that night to be thrown or to be shot. Uh, or it's not allowed for any coke cup to shoot out any star during that night until the morning. And indeed, the sign of its of the sun the morning after is that it will rise or it will travel as if it has no rays. And it will be like the moon on a full night. The sun will look like the moon on a full night, on a full moon night. And it is not permissible for any shaitan to come out along with it, I along with the sun on that day. And this is a benefit when they talk about, obviously, the signs of Laylatul Qadr, but also the hadith when it says that the sun rises between the horns of the shaitan. What does that represent? That the horn rises between the the sun rises between the horns of the shaitan. Right. As far as the kafi, Allah knows best. But from it, one might extract that the harmful rays of looking at the sun, like from the worst times to look at the sun, is during sunrise and sunset. Right. Even though the kafirs, what do they do? That's their favorite time to go look at the sun. All right, sunrise and sunset. But the shayateen are with the sun when it rises and when it sets. Except Laylatul Qadr. Right? It's not allowed for any shaytan to go out with the sun at that time. Qala haddathana Muhammad ibn Bashar, qala haddathana Abu Amin, qala haddathana Zam'ata an Salamata ibn Wihram, an Ikrimata an Ibn Abbas, an Rabi Allah ta'ala anhuma, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anhu qal, ليلة القدر طلقة لا حارة ولا باردة تصبح الشمس يومها حمراء ضعيفة. He says that Muhammad ibn Bashar narrated to us. He said that Abu Amir narrated to us. He said that Zam'a narrated to us about Salama ibn Wahram, about Ikrima, about Ibn Abbas, رضي الله تعالى عنهما, who said about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said ليلة القدر is طلق. It's free, like it's it has no defects in it. I, it's not hot and it's not cold. It's a well balanced night. And in the morning, the sun, the morning after it, the sun rises red and weak. Meaning it's not harmful to look at it. It rises pale and weak. And Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn al-Aswadi and Abi Salamata and Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhum anhum qala 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 radiallahu ta'ala anhum anhum qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa u'tiyatu ummati u'tiyat ummati fi Ramadana khamsa khisalin lam tu'taha lam tu'tahu ummatun qablaha khulufu fam al-sa'imi atibu inda Allahi narrihi al-mis'i wa tastaghfiru lahum al-malaikatu hatta yufdiru wa tusafadu fihi maradatu shayateen fala yakhlusu fihi ila ma kanu yakhlusuna fi ghayri ويزين الله كل يوم جنته ثم يقول يوشك عبادي الصالحون أن يلقوا عنهم المؤنة والأذى ويصيرون إليك ويصيروا إليك ويغفر لهم في آخر ليلة كين يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هي ليلة القدر 
قال لا ولكن العامل انما يوفى اجره اذا قضى عمله He says that uh, Al-Husayn ibn Isa al-Bistami narrated to us, he said that Yazid ibn Harun inform, uh, narrated to us, he said that Hisham ibn Abi Hisham informed us about Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn al-Aswad, about Abi Salima, about Abi Huraira, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that my nation has been given in Ramadan five qualities that none of the other nations before it have been given. The breath of the, uh, the smell of the mouth of a faster is more pleasant to Allah than the smell of misk. The angels seek forgiveness for them until they break their fast. The evil shayateen are chained up during it, so they are not allowed to be free to do what they would normally be free to do it other than it. Allah, the fourth one, Allah decorates the uh every day during it his paradise and he says my slaves it's possible that, that my righteous slaves will be coming uh that it will be removed from my righteous slaves all burdens and harm and it, the time is coming that it will be removed from my righteous slaves all burdens and harm and they will come to you and it is forgiven for them i the muslims during the last night i am ramadan so it was said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is that Laylatul Qadr? I use the last night of Ramadan Laylatul Qadr? He said no But the employee or the, the, the worker Is given his compensation when he completes his job I, When you complete Ramadan You get your compensation for completing it And it's the fact that Allah forgives you He says وَإِنْ قَتَادَةَ أَنْ أَبِي مَيْنُونَةَ أَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ أَنَّهَا لِسَابِعَةٍ وَتَاسِعَةٍ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مَعَهَا أَكْثَرٌ مِنْ عَدْلِ نُجُمِ السَّمَاءِ وَزَعْمَ أَنَّهَا فِي قَوْلِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَ لَيْلَةُ أَرْبَعٍ وَإِشْرِينَ On the authority of Qatada, on the authority of Abi Maymuna, on the authority of Abi Hurayrah, who said that it is the seventh or the ninth, i.e. the twenty-seventh or the twenty-ninth, and the angels during it, and the angels are, they accompany it, and the angels that accompany it, I accompany Layla to Qadr, are more abundant than the stars in the sky. And they also claim that it, according to the statement of Abu Hurairah, is the 27th, I'm sorry, the 24th night. So we have to correct. Abu Hurairah said it's the 7th or the 9th. And he said that they, they say that the statement of Abu Hurairah is that it's the 24th night. This chapter, after talking about when is Laylatul Qadr, he talks about things that are specific to Laylatul Qadr from the action of the slave. He says, what kind of dua should be made in Laylatul Qadr? قال حدثنا وهب بن بقية قال أخبرنا خالد بن عبد الله أن الجريري أن عبد الله بن مريدة أن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها أنها قالت للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رأيت لو عملت ليلة القدر ما كنت أدعو بي قال تقولين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عني He said that Wahab ibn Baqi narrated to us He said that Khalid ibn Abdullah informed us about Al-Juraydi About Abdullah ibn Burayda About Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها That she said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم What do you say if What about if I act If I'm able to act on Layla al-Qadr what dua should I make? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, You should say, Allahumma innaka afuun tu hibbul afwa fa'kwan. Oh Allah, you are one who pardons, or you are the pardoner, and you love pardoning, so pardon me. قال وسيلت عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها أن ليلة القدر فقالت لا أدري أي ليلة 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 القدر أي ليلة ليلة القدر ولو علمت أي ليلة ليلة القدر ما سألت الله فيها إلا العافية. He says and Aisha was asked about ليلة القدر and she said I don't know which night is ليلة القدر. And if I knew which night was ليلة القدر I would ask I wouldn't ask Allah for anything other than pardoning or help. Right, the word could be transferred either way. Here it's more likely help. وكان قتادة يختم القرآن في كل سبع ليال مرة فإذا دخل رمضان ختم في كل ثلاث ليال ليال مرة فإذا دخل العشر ختم كل ليلة مرة. He says in Qatada he used to complete the Quran every seven nights once, 
And then when Ramadan would enter, he would complete the Quran once every three nights. And then when the last 10 would enter, he would complete the Quran every night. قالوا أن حفص بن يليات أن الحسن بن عبيد أنه كان يصلي بهم عبد الرحمن بن الأسود من أول الليل إلى آخره يعني في شهر رمضان وكان يصلي بهم أربعين ركعة والوتر ويصلي فيما بين التروحتين اثنتا عشرة ركعة ويوتر بسبع لا يسلم بينهن ويقول فيما بين ذلك الصلاة وكان يقرأ الثلث القرآن بكل ليلة he said, on the authority of Hafsa bin Yathan, on the authority of Al-Hasan bin Ubaidullah, that he used to lead Salat, uh, that, that Abdul Rahman ibn al-Aswad used to lead them in Salat from the beginning of Ramadan till the end of it, i.e. the month of Ramadan. And he would pray with them 40 raka'at along with witcher. And he would pray between every tarweeha, between every two tarweeha, between every four raka'at, he would pray 12 raka'at. And he would do his witr with seven. And he would not give any salam in between that seven. And he would say between uh, all of that is salat. I mean, you could pray salat between all of this as well. And he used to read a third of the Quran every night. قال وسئل مالك عن قراءة القرآن في رمضان يقرؤون متتابعين أحدهم على إثر صاحبه أم يقرأ كل واحد منهم في حزبه حيث أحب قال بل يقرأ كل واحد منهم على إثر صاحبه أحب إلي بكثير وما يعجبني هذا الذي يفعله بعضهم يقرؤون حيث أحب وإن منهم من يفعل ذلك التماس ما يوافقه من حسن صوته حتى أن بعض الضعفاء يغبطونه بذلك وهذا ما لا خير فيه ولكن أحب ذلك ولكن أحب بذلك السمعة قيل له فالناس فيما مضى لم يكونوا يقرؤون متفرقين قال لا ولكن كان يقرأ كل واحد منهم على إثر صاحبه وهو الصواب وكذلك أنزله الله فليقرأ كما أنزل He said Imam Malik was asked about reciting the Quran in Ramadan talking about reciting the Quran in Tarawih or Tarawih He says should the people read in order, one behind the other, from where the last person stopped. I Meaning you have an imam, he, he read today, and he stopped in Baqarah. Should the imam the next day pick up from where the last imam picked up at? Or can they read from wherever they want? Right? So today the imam read from Baqarah, the imam tomorrow picks up and he's in sort of to north. Imam Malik, he said, instead, no, they should read everyone following up from where the person left off. This is more beloved to me by a lot. And it does, I don't like, my yurjibuni, it doesn't excite me that which some of the people do. They read from wherever they want. Because indeed from them are those who only do that, seeking to recite what they can read really good and make their voices good in in order that some of the weaker people will be attracted to them and envious of them because of that. Meaning some of the people, they want to read from where they read because they recite better there. Right? This is normal. A surah that you recite often, a lot of times you recite it better than a surah that you really recite. And you have more command on its recitation and tajweed and things like that. So Imam Malik is saying he doesn't like the people read from wherever they want but instead they should read continuously from beginning to end. Uh, and he's saying the reason he doesn't like it is because of the showing off that can come in it. He says, well, and there's no good in this. And instead they only do this because they want to show off. It was said to him, what about the uh, the people of the past, talking about the Salaf during the time of Imam Malik, meaning the Tabi, meaning the, uh, the Sahaba, that they used to read, uh, uh, they didn't used to read from wherever they wanted, they would always read continuously like this. He said, uh, no, they didn't read from wherever they wanted, but instead they would read each of them from wherever the person before them left off, and this is what is correct. And like this, the Quran was sent down, so read it the way it was sent down. And that leads to the issue of, is it permissible to read the Quran out of order? Right, can you read the Quran out of order? If you read Bakala, do you have to read Ali Imran next? In the Salat or out of the Salat? Yes, they call it Sakis, right? And the Prophet did that. And so for this reason, some people say it's okay to do. 
Like if you're in Salat and you read Surah Tul Ikhlas, then you read Surah Tabbat, right? Other people say, no, that was done before the final review of the Quran with Jibreel. And during the final review of the Quran, the Quran was put in the order that it's in now. And so you have to start with Fatiha, you have to end with Nas in the Salat. And it's not good to go back and forth between surahs. As far as back and forth between ayah, then this is not permissible at all, right? To read one ayah and then read the one before it. It makes sense to the aspect of, it doesn't make sense to you because you already know the right answer. But what's the obligation in, in Salah? To read Quran. If I read this ayah, then I read the ayah before it. Did I read Quran? So what's your proof? I, I, I read Quran. I did what you told me to do. What about if I take an ayah from this surah and an ayah from that surah and an ayah from this surah? Is that okay? You see what I'm saying? Why? It's not the way it was revealed. You see what I'm saying? That's our proof in saying you can't do that. It's not the way it was revealed. Read the Quran the way it was revealed. Play. So if you got to read the ayah in order. And you got to read the surah in order. Like you can't put the back of the ayah to the front. You can't put the back of the surah to the front. Can I put the surahs out of order? Yes, because You're the surah is like a Why? very comprehensive. The surah yeah, one subject the and, yeah. Some of them say no. The surah, the order of the surahs were revealed. I thought that's how they arranged it. Yeah, that's fine. But why did they arrange it that way? No, they no, say no, no, no. some of them say they arrange it that way because that's the way the prophet told them to arrange it during the final arrangement. So in the beginning of Islam, they would arrange it by order of revelation, how it was sent down and things like that. But in that final presentation yeah. with Jibril and the Prophet Muhammad, that's the that's why they didn't put Bismillah Rahman Rahim in between Surah Al Anfal and Tawbah because they didn't know if it was one Surah or two. Why would they not know? Uh, look, you got to say it the way it came. This is the order that the prophet told us to put it in. Okay, is this another surah? I don't know. Oh, look, just don't put this in there, and it's going to stay in the same order. So some of them say you got to read it in the same order, meaning surah, ayah, and order of the surahs. And then others say, no, the prophet read it out of order. He read Buha, and then he read Shams, I believe, or something like that. And so they say you can go out of order in the surahs, but not in the surah and not in the ayah. But here is the statement of Imam Malik. What does he say? فَلْيُقْرَأْ كَمَا أُنزِلْ Read it the way it was sent down. But this is, this is the last couple of chapters. He says, بَابَ تَرْغِيبِ فِي الدُّعَاءِ إِنْ دَخَلْ Quran. Chapter regarding the encouragement of making dua when you finish the Quran. Like that dua that they call dua khatim al-Quran. The dua for completing the Quran. قال حدثنا أبو زرعة قال حدثنا إبراهيم بن الفضل بن أبي سويد الذارع قال حدثنا صالح المري أن قتالة أن زرارة بن أوفا أن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما أنه قال قام رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أي العمل أفضل قال أو قال أي العمل أحب إلى الله قال الحال المرتحل قال يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما الحال المرتحل قال فتح القرآن وختمه من أوله إلى آخره ومن آخره إلى أوله كلما حل ارتحل. He says that Abu Zur Abu Zur'at narrated to us. He said that Ibrahim ibn Fadl ibn Abi Suwayb al Dari narrated to us. Who said that Salih al Murri narrated to us about Qatada about Zurara ibn Awf about ibn Abbas and رضي الله تعالى عنهما that a man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, O Messenger of Allah, what is what action is the best? Or he said, what action is most beloved to Allah? The Prophet said, Al-Hal Al-Murtahil. The one who comes and goes. The comer, the goer. They said, oh, Messenger of Allah, what's the comer, the goer? What's the one that comes and stays and then goes? He says, it's to begin the Quran and then complete it from beginning to end. And then from end to beginning. Every time he comes... He goes. Right? And this is what they call talk about in the science of Quran, al Hal al Murtahil. That when you get to Surah to Nas, what do you do? You go back to Fatiha. Right? And that when you finish Surah to Nas, you don't stop there. 
you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, and some of them say the first five ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah. Right? Every time you finish, you go again. Al-Hali came, you got there, and then you go again. Al-Hali al-Murtahim. قال حدثنا يحيى قال اخبرنا صالح المري قال ايوب ان ابي قلابه في حديث كان يرفعه من شهد فاتحه القران حين يستفتح كان كمن شهد فتحا في سبيل الله ومن شهد خاتمته خاتمته حين يختم كان كمن شهد الغنائم حين قسمت he said that yahya informed us he said that yahya narrated to us he said that صالح المري informed us about ايوب about ابي قلابه in a hadith that he used to attribute it to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that whoever witnesses the opening of the Quran, when it's officially, when you, when you first begin it, then it's as if he's witnessed a conquest in the path of Allah. It's as if you were part of a conquest in Sabilillah. And whoever witnesses the completion of the Quran, when it's completed, it's as if he was a part of the treasure that was distributed after the battle. He said that Anas, when he would complete the Quran, he would gather his family or his children and his family and the family in his house and he would make dua for them. Right? So this shows, is it okay to make dua for completing the Quran? Yeah. yeah. They used to make Khatim al Quran. They used to make dua for completing the Quran. قال وكان رجل يقرأ القرآن من أوله إلى آخره في مشي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان ابن عباس يجعل عليه رقيبا فإذا أراد أن يقتم قال لجلسائه قوموا حتى نحضر الخاتمة. He said that a man used to recite Quran from its beginning to its end in the Prophet's masjid صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Ibn Abbas used to appoint somebody to like watch him, right? يراقبه. Like watch this guy. Wait, let me know when he's getting close to the end. And when he would want to complete the Quran, Ibn Abbas would say to all the people that he would sit with, let's go so we can witness the completion of the Quran. Right? They would go just to hear him complete the Quran and get what? The dua and the reward. But to be part of that dua for completing the Quran. Because once you complete the Quran, you're going to make dua and I want to be part of that. وأن إبراهيم التيمي وطلحة بن مصرف أنه قال كان يقال إذا ختم رجل القرآن من أول النهار صلت عليه الملائكة بقية نهاره حتى يمسي وإذا ختمه من أول الليل من أول الليل صلت عليه الملائكة بقية ليلته حتى يصبح وكان يحبون أن يختم القرآن في أول النهار أو في أول الليل. He says that Ibrahim al Taymi said about uh, it was said about Ibrahim al Taymi. Uh, about uh, who and Talha ibn Musarraf, and Talha ibn Musarraf, that it, they both said that it used to be said whoever completed the Quran in the beginning of the day, the angels would send salat upon him for the rest of the day until he goes into the evening. And whoever completed the Quran at the beginning of the night, the angels would send salat upon him until he completed, until he entered the morning. And they used to love to complete the Quran either in the beginning of the day or the beginning of the night. All right? They wanted to get this, so they would always try to complete the Quran in the beginning of the day, so they would have it all day or in the beginning of the night. And on the authority of Abdul Rahman ibn al Aswad, he said that it, Salat is sent upon the person who completes the Quran. وقال مجاهد تنزل تنزل عليه تنزل عليه تنزل عليه الرحمة عند ختم القرآن وكان يجتمعون عند ختم القرآن ويقولون الرحمة تنزل مجاهد said that the rahma is sent down upon the person when he completes the Quran and they used to gather when a person would complete the Quran and they would say the mercy is being sent down right this is the time that the mercy is being sent down وقال محمد بن جحادة كانوا يستحبون إذا ختموا القرآن من الليل أن يختموه في ركعتين اللتين بعد المغرب right? وإذا ختموه من النهار أن يختموه في الركعتين اللتين قبل الفجر He says that Muhammad ibn Juhad he said they used to prefer that when they would complete the Quran at night they would complete it in the two raka'at that are after Maghrib right Meaning, this is like etiquette of recite. If you're the Imam of Taraweeh and you're praying with the people and you're getting close to finishing the Quran, when do you finish it? Do you let the end of the Quran be your last raka'at from Taraweeh? 
like, okay, today is the last, we, we're, we're, we're getting towards the end of the Quran, right? And I just pray, like, I, it's 10 days left, whatever, I'm close to the end. When should I try to squeeze in my last part of it? When should I try to squeeze in the completion of the Quran? Should I wait to the last rakaat of Tarawi, for example? Right, I should try to get it in that mugrib, right? Why? Because whoever completes it in the first part of the night, the angel sends salat upon him until the morning. So they used to prefer to complete the Quran in the two raka'at that are after Maghrib, i.e. the sunnahs that are after Maghrib. And when they would complete it in the daytime, they would try to complete it in the sunnahs that are before Fajr. Right? He says, and on the authority of Al Maqburi and Sa'id, on the authority on the authority of Sa'id, on the authority of Duwaid, on the authority of Malik ibn Kathir, on the authority of Abdul Rahman ibn Hujayra, who said that if I to know one ayah is better than to, is more beloved to me than reading a hundred. And Sa'id, he said, it's reached me that the slave, if he completes the Quran, when he reads the Quran, until he, if the slave reads the Quran until he completes it, and then he starts it over again, it said you made your Lord happy. When on the authority of Apa, uh, on the authority of Abi Abdul Rahman, who said that uh, if a man complete, if a person completes the Quran, it said to him, "Glad tidings! I swear by Allah, there's nobody above you today better than you, except I mean, there's nobody above you today unless there's a person who has actions better than yours." And Ibn Mubarak, he said, if it's the winter, then complete the Quran in the beginning of the night. Why? Nights longer. And if it's the summer, then complete the Quran in the beginning of the day. And it was uh, Abdul Aziz, he said, I asked Abdullah, Yani ibn Mas'ud, how do you complete the Quran? He says, as far as me, then I prefer or I love to make ruku and then make sujood and then make dua in my sujood. Meaning he could, his, the dua for completing the Quran, he used to try to make it in his sujood. قال وكان يوسف بن أسباط إذا ختم القرآن يقول اللهم لا تم لا تم لا تمقطنا سبعين مرة and Yusuf ibn Asbab, when he would complete the Quran, he would say, Oh Allah, don't be angry with us 70 times. And this is the last chapter. He says, Bab Qiyam Laylat al Eid, chapter regarding standing the night before the Eid. Qala Harun ibn Ubaidullah al Aslami, Qala Balagani, and who men Ahia Laylat al Eid, Lam Yamut Kabla, who Yoma Tamut al Kulub. Harun ibn Ubaidullah al Islami, he said that it's reached me that whoever enlivens the night of the Eid, i.e., the night before the Eid, he does, his heart does not die on the day when the hearts die. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ أُمَامَةَ تَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةِ الْعِيدِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا لَمْ يَمُتْ قَلْبُهُ حِينَ تَمُوتُ الْقُلُوبُ وَعَنَ بِنُ الْمُبَارِكِ مِثْلَهُ and on the authority of Abi Umama, he said that whoever stands the night before the Eid with Iman and with hope, his heart does not die when the hearts die. And Ibn Mubarak said something similar. And on the authority of Mujahid, he said the night before Fitr is like one of the nights of the last 10 nights, i.e. in its value and its virtue. He said that Abdul Rahman ibn al Aswad, he used to stand with the people on the night before the Eid al Fitr with 40 raka'at, and he would give his witcher with seven. أصبحوا مستيقنين أنه قد تقبل منهم شهرهم 
هذا لكان ينبغي أن يصبحوا مشاغلين بأداء الشكر أما هم فيه ولئن كانت الأخرى لقد كان ينبغي لهم أن يصبحوا أشغل وأشغل ثم قال كثير ما يأتيني من يسألني من إخواني فيقول يا أبا أمية ما بلغتك أن من طاف سبعا بهذا البيت ما له من الأجر فأقول يغفر الله لنا ولكم بل اسألوا عما أوجب الله عليه من أداء الشكر والطواف هذا السبع ورزقه حين حرم غيره فيقولون إنا نرجو فيقول وهيب ولا والله ما رجى عبد قط حتى يخاف ثم يقول كيف تجتري أنك ترجو رضا من لا تخاف غضبه إنما الراجي إبراهيم خليل الرحمن إذ يخبرك الله أنه أنه قال إذ وإذ يرفع إبراهيم الخواعد من البيت وإسماعيل يقول وهيب فإلى ماذا قال ربنا تقبل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك ثم قال والذي أطمع أن يغفر لي خطيئتي يوم الدين ثم قال واجعل لي لسان صدق في الآخرين this narration is that he says in uh, Wuhayb prayed the day of the Eid, i.e. the night before the Eid. And when he was done, when the people were done and leaving, they began to pass by him. And so he looked at all of them, thumma zafara. Fanavara ilayhim thumma zafara. I don't know what that word means, zafara. Zufar. It's like, like kind of like that, if I'm not mistaken, like to turn his nose up at him, zafara. A zafar is to a person to be filled with worry and like you hear that moaning out of the, uh, right so he says he looked at him and then he made that moaning sound and he said i mean he saw the people leaving uh on the day of the evening they didn't pray that night he prayed that night but they didn't pray he saw the people passing by him and leaving and he said that he looked at them and he said uh, if these people, if these people knew that in the morning that their month had been accepted from them, then it was suitable for them that they should busy themselves with showing appreciation this night. Meaning if you knew Allah accepted your fasting and your standing in the month of Ramadan, then you should show appreciation by standing on the night of the Eid. He said, uh, and if they, if the affair was opposite of that, if they didn't know Allah accepted their standing in their fasting, then it was even more suitable that they should enter into their morning even more busy and more busy, meaning they should be doing it, if they, especially if they didn't know it was accepted. He said, a lot of the people come to me and they ask me from my brothers, they say, oh, Abu Umayyah, what has reached you about the reward of the one who makes tawaf around the Kaaba seven times? He said, may Allah forgive us and you. You all should be asking instead about what is the obligation of appreciation for the one who makes tawaf around the Kaaba seven times when Allah has provided him the ability to do that when he made it haram on other people. He didn't allow other people to do that. Like, don't ask what the reward is. Ask what you need to do to show appreciation. He goes on to say, indeed, uh, the people say they hope. And Wuhayb, he said, no, Wallahi, a slave has never had true hope until he has fear. Meaning this is the Aqeed of Ahl Sunnah, you have to be between hope and fear. He says, and then he said, how can a person claim that they hope the pleasure of one who they're not scared of his anger? Indeed, the one who truly hoped from Allah was Khalil, Ibrahim, the Khalil of Ar-Rahman. Allah informed you about him when he said, and when Ibrahim raised the foundation of the house as well as Ismail, Wuhayb said, until Allah says the statement, they said, O oh our Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, you are a Sami al Alim. O oh our Lord, and make us Muslims to you, and from our offspring, a nation that is Muslim to you. So this was them having fear of Allah and hope of Allah, he's basically saying. He says, and then Allah says about Ibrahim as well, he says, and the one who I hope that he will forgive me of my sins on the day of compensation. And Allah says about him, oh Allah, make for me a, a, a statement of praise in the later generations. So he's just showing that Ibrahim used to worship Allah between fear and hope. He says, Hadathana Abu Zur'a qala Hadathana Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah al-Uwaisi 
قال حدثني سليمان بن بلال بن بلال عن عيسى بن يزيد عن عمر بن ابي حفص عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما انه انصرف ليله ليله صلى مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيها فسمع فسمعه يدعو في الوتر فقال اللهم اني اسالك الرحمه عندك تهدي بها قلبي وتجمع بها امري وتلم بها شعفي وترفع بها شاهدي وتحفظ بها غائبي وتلهمني بها رشدي وتعصمني بها من كل سوء اللهم اني اسالك رحمه من عندك انال بها شرف كرامتك في الدنيا والاخره اللهم ذا الامر الرشيد والحبل الشديد اسالك الامن يوم الوعيد والجنة يوم الخلود مع المقربين الشهود انك رحيم ودود وانك فعال لما تريد اللهم هذا الجهد وعليك التكلان وهذا الدعاء وعليك الاستحباب وعليك الاستجابه ولا حول ولا قوة الا بالله اللهم اني اسالك الفوز عند القضاء ومنازل الشهداء وعيش السعداء والنصر على الاعداء انك سميع الدعاء اللهم اجعلني حربا لاعدائك سلما لاوليائك احب بحبك الناس وعادي بعداوتك من قالفك اللهم اجعل في قلبي نورا وفي سمعي نورا وفي بصري نورا وعن يميني نورا وعن شمالي نورا واجعل فوقي نورا وتحت نورا واعظم لي نورا سبحان الذي ليس لبس العز وقال بي سبحان الذي لا ينبغي التسبيح الا لا سبحان الذي تعطف بالمجد وتكرم به سبحان ذي المن والطول He says that Abu Zur'ah, he said that uh, he narrated to us that Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah al-Uwaisi uh, narrated to us. He said that Sulaiman ibn Bilal narrated to me about Isa ibn Yazid, about Umar ibn Abi Hafs, about Ibn Abbas, that, he, he, that Ibn Abbas, when he left that night, that he prayed during it with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Abbas has a famous story where he prayed with the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu when he spent the night over the house of Maymunah, he said he heard the Messenger of Allah making the dua, making in making this dua in his witr. And the dua is what we just read, we're not going to translate it all. Allahumma inni asaluka rahmatan min indika, tahdi biha qalbi, wa tajma' biha amri, wa tulimu biha shahti, wa tarfa' biha shahidi, wa tahfad biha ghaibi, wa tulhimuni biha rushdi, wa tu'asimuni biha min kulli su'in. Allahumma inni asaluka rahmatan min indika, anana biha sharafa karamatik, fi dunya wal akhirah. اللهم ذا الأمر الرشيد والحبل الشديد أسألك الأمن يوم الوعيد والجنة يوم الخلود مع المقربين الشهود إنك رحيم ودود إنك فعال لما تريد اللهم هذا الجهد وعليك التكلان وهذا الدعاء وعليك الاستجابة ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم إني أسألك الفوز عند القضاء ومنازل الشهداء وعيش السعداء والنصر على العداء إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اجعلني حربا لاعدائك سلما لاوليائك احب بحبك الناس واعادي بعداوتك من خالفك اللهم اجعل في قلبي نورا وفي سمعي نورا وفي بصري نورا وعن يميني نورا وعن شمالي نورا واجعل فوقي نورا وتحت نورا واعظم لي نورا سبحان الذي ليس لبس العز وقال بي سبحان الذي لا ينبغي التسبيح الا له سبحان الذي تعطف بالمجد وتكرم به سبحان ذي المن والطول نعم And then the last narrations, he says, the last chapter, Bab man salla laylatul qadri al isha fi jama'ah. This chapter is about the one who prays on laylatul qadri isha with the congregation. And this is an encouragement when we talked about before, we talked about the Juma, I believe, that the value of laylatul qadri and the different ways to catch it. He says, An Abdullah ibn Amr man salla isha al akhira asaba laylatul qadri. وأن الضحاك من صلى المغرب والعشاء في مشهد جماعة في رمضان فقد أصاب ليلة القدر حظا وافيا والله أعلم. He says on the authority of Abdullah bin Amr, whoever prays Isha, the last one, i.e. Isha, the last one, he catches ليلة القدر. And he said on ضحاك, whoever prays Maghrib and Isha in the masjid with the congregation in Ramadan, then he catches from ليلة القدر a very large portion. And Allah knows best. And with this, we've completed the book, Standing in the Month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, alladhi bi ni'matihi fi tumma salliha. Allahumma as-saluka. Al-fawzu bil-jannah. Allahumma nas'aluka al-fawzu bil-jannah. Wa hana jata min al-nar. Allahumma gfir lana wa li mashayikina wa li walinina. Yawma tukumun hisab. Rabbana atina fi al-dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina a'thab al-nar. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilahe la anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. I think, and Allah knows best, that maybe Al-Khamis, inshallah, after Asr, 
or maybe El Irbi'a and El Khamis will try to read the book by uh, Abu Bakr Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Firyabi, who was born in the year 207 from the contemporaries of all of these mashayikh, uh, uh, Abu Bakr al Firyabi. He has a book called Ahkam Salat al Eid, the rulings about Salat al Eid. And it's about a hundred and something narrations. It's about half the size of this. So we might be able to do it in two sittings, inshallah. And we'll read that so we can, by doing this, have completed the standing of Ramadan and also read the book, the rulings related to Salat al Eid. Uh,